Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at solving logarithmic equations using the anti-log concept. And some of the equations we're going to look at are going to involve extraneous solutions. Okay, we're going to start with a fairly straightforward equation. Log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of 50 equals 3. Before we start to solve, though, when, when you're working with logarithmic equations, it's important to recognize that this expression with the variable in it here, this log base 5 of x, there's going to be some restrictions on the variable. There's certain numbers that don't work, that are non-permissible for that expression. Essentially, the logarithm of something has to be a positive number. You can't take the logarithm of a negative, and you can't take the logarithm of zero. So essentially, our restriction is going to be that x has to be bigger than 0. And you're going to see that that's going to become important later on. So to solve this equation here, I'll write it out down here. Now, we have a couple of expressions on this side. And before we get to using our anti-log concept, we've got to make it so that we have a single term on each side. So we're going to have to combine these together as you've likely seen before, you have two logarithms added. That is going to be the same as the logarithm of the product of those two things. So logarithm of x times 50, I will write it as 50x. Log of 50x equals 3. Now that we have a single term on each side, we have 3 on this side and log of 50x on that side. Now we can do the anti-log of each side, right? We can undo this. This log base 5 here, the opposite, the inverse of that is anti-log base 5, which is essentially making the expression on each side the exponent on a 5, right? And then the reason that that works is because these two cancel each other, 5 to the power of log base 5, so that all we have over here is 50x. And on the other side, we have 5 to the 3, which is 125, if you happen to know your powers of 5. And then, of course, it's just we've reduced it down to a linear equation here, and we can divide both sides by 50. So we get that x is 125 over 50. Or of course, if you reduce that down, that is the same as 5 over 2. Or if you like decimals, 2.5. All right. Now, before we say we're done here, it's good to just look back at our restriction here. The solution has to be bigger than or equal to zero, and it is, so that checks out. So we're good here. That's the solution, right? You could actually check your solution the way you have done, likely in the past, for equations by substituting it in for that. And we'll do that really quickly right now with a calculator. All right, so we'll put this in quickly. Substitute our value in there. If our solution's correct here, we should get 3, which we do, so that verifies that. All right, let's do another example. So this one's going to involve several steps. We have the variable right here that we're trying to isolate, and we have the log base 3 of this expression, and then the log base 2 of that expression. So it's kind of log of log of something. We're going to have to, again, we're going to consider the restrictions right at the start here. So essentially, again, this expression right here has to be positive. Can't be negative, can't be zero. So I'm just going to write that over here. x minus 3 has to be bigger than zero. So solving that inequality, x has to be bigger than 3. So we'll just keep that in mind as we move forward here. Now, this already is a single term. And this is, of course, a single term here. This is not at logs added together like in our previous one. So we can actually just anti-log both sides at this point. And so this outermost one, this says log base 2 of this whole thing. So then if I was to anti-log both sides like that, that would cancel that out. And I'm just going to have then log base 3 of x minus 3 equal to 2 to the 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. All right, now I've eliminated one of those log functions. Now, this is still just a single term here, and I can then anti-log base 3 next, B 
because that cancels that out. And then I just have x minus 3. I don't really need the brackets anymore. And I have 3 to the 2 on this side. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And then, of course, it's a linear equation. I can solve it, add 3 to both sides, and I get 12. We're just going to check again with our restriction here. It has to be greater than or equal to 3, which it is, so that works. So this one we'll check just by writing it down because we'll be able to evaluate these expressions mentally here. And so I have my value I'll put in there is 12. And we'll work out the rest of it here. And we have equals 1. So we want to make sure that whole thing equals 1. Well, I work this out. That's a 9 in there, right? 9. And I have log base 3 of that 9. And then I have log base 2 of that. I can work this out, log base 3 of 9. 9 is the second power of 3, so it's a 2. And I have log base 2 of that. Log base 2 of 2. 2 is 2 to the power of 1, so that is indeed 1. And of course, that's what I have over here, so I'm good with that. All right, let's do a third example here. Now here we have something a little bit more involved because if you notice, we have x in more than one place here. Now we're going to approach it exactly the same, but you're going to see that there's a few little differences as we move along here. But before we start, we'll again check our restrictions. We have two expressions to check here. That first one, x has to be greater than 0. And the second one, x plus 3 has to be greater than 0, which means that x has to be greater than negative 3. Now we have two restrictions to think about. x has to be greater than 0 and x has to be greater than negative 3. Well, if you kind of think about those together, maybe you think about a number line, well, negative 3 is here. So you need, it has to be bigger than that, but 0 is here, it has to be bigger than that. So essentially those two together, it has to be bigger than 0. If, it, if it's bigger than 0, it meets both of those. So that's our restriction for this. All right, we'll just keep that in mind as we solve this. So solving this, we're going to do the same thing as we did in the first one because we have two terms on this side, right? You have one term on this side and you have two terms on this side. We need to combine those together before we start using anti-logs. So log of 7 and log of this, we can combine together as a single logarithm of 7 times x plus 3. And on the other side, of course, we have log of 10x. Now, I can actually multiply this out if I wanted to at this point. Inside there, if I want to multiply it out, I can just make it 7x plus 21, right? And I have still log 10x on this side. Now, when there's no base shown here, of course, it's base 10. And at this point, I have log of this equals log of this. And that's going to work nicely when I anti-log both sides because... I'm going to do anti-log base 10 on both sides, and not only is it going to cancel that one, it's also going to cancel that one. And then I just have 10x equals 7x plus 21. And now again, it's a linear equation I can solve, but since I have x in more than one place, of course, solving that, I got to move that term over. So I'm going to have 3x equals 21, or of course, x equals 7. And again, we'll go back to our restriction okay with our restriction here. All right, so that's good. That's our solution. You could check it, go to a calculator, put it in and see what you get, but you'll find that it certainly works. I mean, you can even do a kind of a half a check here by saying log of 10 times x, that's log of 70. And then over here you have log of seven, plus this would be log of 10 if you put the seven in, right? So you can kind of do a half a check there just by looking at it and seeing that it's gonna work. All right, let's do one more here. This again involves two different terms that involve x. We have this term, we have this term, both of those involve x, and then we have that term on that side of the equation. And so again, restrictions, we have this first one, x minus two has to be greater than zero, which means x has to be greater than two. And we have for the second one here, with just that x there, x has to be greater than zero. So again, if you look to combine those two, if your solutions have to be greater than zero and your solution has to be greater than two, you combine those two together, this 
is what you get. If you're greater than two, it works for both. All right, so like the last one, we'll combine these two terms together here using the log law for products. So we're gonna get log base seven of x times x minus two, I'll write it in that order, doesn't matter when you're multiplying, equals log base seven of three. I'll write that out, multiplied form, x squared minus 2x equals log base 7 of 3. Now at this point again, we have log base 7 on either side. We can anti-log base 7, and it actually is going to cancel out both of them, the way it did in the last one. And we just have x squared minus 2x equals 3. Now, that's a quadratic equation this time, but we can solve it using what you hopefully know about solving quadratics. I'm going to move that 3 to the other side to make it equal 0. So I'm going to make it x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. You can use the quadratic formula, or if you are someone who likes to factor, this one factors x plus 1, x minus 3 equals 0. So we have x equals negative 1 or 3. Quadratic can have two solutions, and that's what they are. Now we're gonna to have to check our restriction here. X has to be greater than or equal to two because the expressions in the original equation do not work. They are undefined if the values are less than two. And so when we look at our two solutions here, one of them is gonna work. Three is okay, but negative one is not okay. So what we're gonna to have to do is say that we're gonna reject this one because even though it comes out as a solution in our process, it's not a solution to the original equation. So there's actually only one solution to this, x equals 3, even though we get 2 there. When you have solutions like that that come out of your process of solving but aren't solutions to the original equation, that's what we call extraneous solutions. Now the reason that happens, if you look back here, you have two separate expressions that have that restriction, but when you multiply them together here, Let's say our negative one, if we put our negative one in there, if this was negative one in here, and this was negative one in here, that'd be negative three times negative one, which is positive three, and that would work in this thing. Log of a positive would be fine, and that would work, except in the original equation, it doesn't work because they're those two separate expressions. So that's an example of a log equation where there's an extraneous solution that we have to reject. All right, let's do one last example here. This is similar, but does have some things that are a little different. We're gonna approach it the same way by starting by thinking about our restrictions. We have two different expressions here, one minus three x and three minus x. Both of those have to be greater than zero, so one minus three x has to be greater than zero and three minus x has to be greater than zero. Not sure how much solving inequalities you've done before, but I am gonna do this by moving the negative term over to the other side to make it positive, to make it three x. Have to keep the sign the same way, they're like that. Three x, if I read it this way, it says three x is less than one. If I divide by three, I get x is less than one third. That's one of the restrictions for that first expression. Now you may have solved that a slightly different way if you started with that same thing, but you move the one over there, it becomes negative one, and you have negative three x is greater than negative one, and then if you divide both sides by negative three, you still get your positive one third over there, and you still get x over here. It's just that in solving inequalities, if you divide or multiply by a negative on both sides, you have to know that this sign has to switch around. So it has to flip to say x is less than that. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong inequality there. Same with the other one there. I'll do it by moving this to the other side and having x there and the three over here and reading it this way, it says x is less than three. All right. If you prefer to write it the other way, you can write it this way, x is less than three, and the same with the other one there. So if you have to be less than three and less than one third, well, less than one third is what it boils down to because it has to be both of those true, so that's the one we're gonna go with here. Let's erase this, just to make sure I have enough space for what I'm doing here. So first thing I'm gonna do is combine those two terms together log base four of one minus three x 
times 3 minus x, and then that's equal to 2. At that point, I like to actually multiply this out before I do anything else. So if I multiply that out, I get 3. I get minus 9x minus 1x, so minus 10x. And then I get my plus 3x squared over there equals 2. At this point now, I can anti-log both sides. Now, that's anti-log base 4, and that side is going to cancel that logarithm out. The other side is not a logarithm, but I still have to anti-log both sides to cancel it out, right? You have to do the same thing to both sides, just like any other equation you've solved before. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, so anti-log base 4 both sides cancels that, and I just have this quadratic term here. I'm going to write it in the sort of usual form with the 3x squared first minus 10x, and then that plus 3, and then the other side, 4 squared is 16, and then we're going to look to solve it by factoring, or again, you could use the quadratic formula. So i got to make it equal 0 on both sides, move that 16 over, in other words, subtract 16 from both sides. So I have 3x squared minus 10x minus 13 equals 0. That one also factors. It factors to x plus 1, 3x minus 13 equals 0. Or again, of course, if you prefer the quadratic formula, that is absolutely an option. So that means our two solutions are negative 1 from this one, or this is going to give us 13 over 3. And then we just need to check with our restrictions. Right, so we said they have to be less than or equal to a third. So we have negative one, right? Negative one, that's of course less than a third. That works. But this one, 13 over three, that is definitely not less than a third, right? It's greater than one third, so it doesn't work. Right, so there's actually only one solution here, which is this one. So we're going to say that our final solution here is x equals negative 1. We are going to, just for good measure here, say we're rejecting this one because it's extraneous. And that's the solution. So maybe something worth noticing here is this time we rejected the positive one because it didn't work in there. Don't just, you might sort of develop a, a pattern where you just think that the negative one always gets rejected. In this case, the positive one gets rejected. You can have some where both of them get rejected or neither one gets rejected. All right, so that is several examples of solving logarithmic equations with the idea that you're using the anti-log concept to work at isolating the variable. And several of those examples had extraneous solutions where you had to reject one of your answers. That's it.